pastors, seminarians, and saints from all around the world who wish for heaven and eternal life. It is nice to meet you. I am the head of the Namsan Church of the Simon Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, and my name is Kim Tae Jun. We sincerely thank you for attending the Shincheonji Online Seminar on the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter today. The title of today's lesson is Intermediate Lesson 19, The Sound of the Last Seventh Trumpet. The main references are 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 54, Revelation chapter 10, verse 7, and Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Among the pastors who are attending today's seminar, some of you may have heard of this title, and some of you may have not heard about it yet. However, this content is what all believers must know, so I hope you listen to this carefully. The key point of today's main reference 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 54, is the mystery of the sound of the last seventh trumpet. This mystery is the sound of the trumpet that accomplishes God's victory, resurrection, and eternal life. To find out why the work of accomplishing God's victory, resurrection, and eternal life is the mystery of the sound of the seventh and last trumpet, let us read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 54. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true, death has been swallowed up in victory. As we have read the words of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 54, it is said that the sound of the last trumpet is God's mystery, and that we will all be changed at the last trumpet in a flash in the twinkling of an eye. It is saying that the spirit of the dead will be resurrected as an imperishable spiritual body, and we who are living will also be changed as well. If it is so, how will it change? When a mortal body is clothed with the immortal and imperishable spiritual body, death is swallowed up by life and eternal life is achieved. Then, in order to participate in the resurrection and eternal life, which is the hope of all believers, we must hear the sound of the last trumpet. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 31 as well, it is said that Jesus will return with the angels with a loud trumpet call to gather the elect. Then, how can we hear the sound of the last trumpet that gathers the elect and brings about resurrection and eternal life? In order to understand the meaning of the sound of the last trumpet and how to hear it, let's first understand what the trumpet sound in the Bible means. You have already heard through the introductory seminars that in the Bible, there are physical trumpets and also the spiritual trumpets that are likened to the physical trumpets. If you look at the words of Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1, it says, Raise your voice like a trumpet and to preach the word of God. It is saying that the word preached through a person's voice was a trumpet sound. Therefore, the meaning of the sound of the spiritual trumpet is the word that reveals the events that have appeared. Then, 
how can believers today hear this trumpet sound? Let's read Revelation chapter 8 verse 2 to find out how the trumpet appearing in Revelation is blown and what number this trumpet is. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. As we see from Revelation chapter 8 verse 2, it is said that the seven angels received the seven trumpets. So, those who blow the trumpets are the angels, and the trumpets that the angels received are the flesh chosen by the angels to preach the word. In the book of Revelation, the trumpets are sounded seven times in total. Out of the seven trumpets, four trumpets are sounded in Revelation chapter 8, two trumpets are sounded in Revelation chapter 9, and a seventh trumpet is sounded in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. So the seventh trumpet is the last trumpet. However, it is interesting to see that not all the seven trumpets have the same trumpet sound, but the sound of the first six trumpets and the last seventh trumpet sound have different targets and different contents. The difference is that the sound of the first to the sixth trumpets in Revelation chapters 8 and 9 is a sound that reveals that the betrayers were sacrificed by the destroyers. And the sound of the seventh and last trumpet in Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 is different from the sound that lets known that the chosen people were being destroyed by the beast. It is a sound that announces the salvation through the victory of God. Then the first six trumpets that were sounded earlier and the last seventh trumpet have different roles. Among them, what we must understand today is the sound of the last seventh trumpet that announces the news of salvation. Then, let's see what happens when the last and seventh trumpet sound is sounded. If you look at the contents of Revelation chapter 10, a mighty angel with a little scroll which lay open appears, and the angel swears by God. And in verse 7, it is said that when the seventh trumpet is sounded, the mystery of God will be accomplished just as he announced to his servants the prophets. Then, what is this mystery of God that will be accomplished just as he announced to his servants the prophets at the sound of the seventh trumpet of salvation? In order to find out about the mystery that will be accomplished at the sound of the seventh trumpet, let's read Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. Looking at the words of Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, it is said that when the seventh angel sounds the trumpet, the kingdom of the world will be changed to become the kingdom of God. Up to the sound of the sixth trumpet, it was the sound that reveals that the chosen people who had betrayed were sacrificed, and the beast, which is Satan's pastor, had triumphed. But on the other hand, the sound of the seventh trumpet is a sound of salvation through the victory of God. Therefore, the believers in the world start to realize and become the saints in the kingdom of God from the time when the seventh trumpet is sounded. This is how the kingdom of the world becomes the kingdom of God. Then, how is the mystery which was announced through the servants the prophets accomplished through the sound of the seventh trumpet? As we can see from today's main reference in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 54, when the last trumpet sounds, the spirits of the saints who have died will be resurrected with the imperishable spiritual bodies. And the saints who are alive 
will be changed into immortal and imperishable bodies so that they will be able to attain eternal life. What kind of change is this so that they become imperishable and immortal? The change is through the spirit and the body that belong to God becoming one. In other words, the spirits of the saints who are dead are changed and resurrected as they receive the body of the living. And those who are living receive the spirit, become changed, and reach eternal life together with Christ. This is the event of the first resurrection in Revelation chapter 20, where death is swallowed up by life. And the words of the Bible are accomplished, which says that those who believe in God and Jesus will live even if they die, and those who live and believe will never taste death. In this way, if we summarize the results of the seventh trumpet sound that we have seen so far inside of the Bible, when the seventh trumpet is sounded, the kingdom of the world becomes a kingdom of God. And in that place, resurrection and eternal life will be accomplished. Therefore, the sound of the seventh trumpet will be the sound of the trumpet of salvation announcing the fulfillment of this promise of salvation. And that sound of the trumpet is the mystery of salvation. Then who are the ones who will be changed at the sound of the seventh trumpet, be resurrected and live forever? To find out who will receive this tremendous blessing, let's read Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 to 6. Then I saw thrones, and seated on them were those to whom the authority to judge was committed. Also I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection, over such the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with Him for a thousand years. In Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 to 6, we see those who share in the first resurrection. One is the martyred souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God. And the other are those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark. It is said that they live and reign with Christ for a thousand years, so the first resurrection is accomplished. The spirit and the flesh that share in the first resurrection, which is a tremendous blessing, are those who have been changed at the sound of the last trumpet as stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Therefore, the spirits of the dead that are changed by the last trumpet will not be the spirits of just any dead people, but they are the souls of the martyrs who had been beheaded. And we who are changed to have eternal life are those who have not worshipped the beast or its image and have not received its mark, but instead have received the seal of God. Therefore, resurrection and eternal life will come true to those who partake in the first resurrection in spirit and in flesh. Therefore, all believers must hear the sound of the last trumpet and become those who share in the first resurrection in which resurrection and eternal life are accomplished. So then, how can we hear the sound of the last trumpet? And, how can we recognize the trumpet sound? It is said that the last trumpet that appears as a seventh trumpet in the book of Revelation is a trumpet of salvation and it is the mystery of salvation. Therefore, in order to understand the mystery of the seventh and last trumpet of Revelation, we must understand the three mysteries of Revelation. Have you all heard that there are three mysteries in the book of Revelation? 
It may seem unfamiliar to some, but the book of Revelation promises three mysteries, the mystery of betrayal, the mystery of destruction, and the mystery of salvation. Those who understand the three mysteries can perceive the mystery of salvation and participate in the work of salvation. Now to confirm this, Let's first read Revelation chapter 1 verse 20 where the mystery of betrayal appears. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Revelation chapter 1 verse 20 records the mystery of the seven stars and the seven golden lampstands. Here, because the act of betrayal of the seven angels, the seven stars, was a trap to catch the devil, just as in Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 24, it is the mystery of betrayal. And the reason it was called a mystery is because no one, not even the messengers of the seven churches, no one had known about this fact. Next, let's read Revelation chapter 17 verse 7 where the mystery of destruction is recorded. Then the angel said to me, Why are you astonished? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides, which has the seven heads and ten horns. In Revelation chapter 17 verse 7, the mystery of the prostitute and of the beast with seven heads and ten horns is recorded. Because this beast is the one that destroyed the chosen people who betrayed, which was the mystery of betrayal, this beast is the mystery of destruction. Finally, to find out the mystery of salvation, let's read Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. But in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished, just as he announced to his servants the prophets. The mystery of salvation in Revelation chapter 10 verse 7 is the mystery of the sound of the seventh trumpet. The sound of the seventh trumpet, which brings God's victory, resurrection, and eternal life, is the mystery of salvation. And the reality of the seventh trumpet, which is the person who delivers the word, is the mystery of the Savior. Thus far, we have looked at these types of mysteries that exist. Those who understand these mysteries can go to the place of salvation where the seventh trumpet is sounded. Then, today, when the book of Revelation is fulfilled, through whom can we know the realities of the three mysteries of Revelation? We are able to know them through the promised shepherd, the promised pastor, the new John who has seen and heard the reality of the mystery that has appeared as prophesied in Revelation. He is the one who received and ate the open scroll through Jesus in Revelation chapter 10 and is the one who saw and heard the events next to Jesus when Jesus was fulfilling the entire book of Revelation as mentioned in Revelation chapter 22 verse 8. And he is the messenger or the angel of Jesus who speaks on his behalf, whom Jesus had chosen to testify the events of the entire book of Revelation to the churches as stated in Revelation chapter 22 verse 16. Then shouldn't believers who attend church hear the voice of the messenger sent by Jesus and understand the mysteries of the book of Revelation? Because the messenger of Jesus has seen and heard the reality of the three mysteries revealed as prophesied in the book of Revelation, he can understand and testify to the betrayers, the destroyers, and the Savior. There is only one messenger of Jesus who understands these mysteries because he has seen, heard, and understood through Jesus at the scene where Jesus fulfilled these events of the book of Revelation we must receive his testimony in order to know the reality of these mysteries. Then, in order to confirm the reality of these three beings, we must first understand the order in which they appear. In what order will the three beings of Revelation appear? To confirm this, 
Let's read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to Him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy, report, or letters supposed to have come from us, saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. As we see in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, it is said that at the second coming of the Lord, after the work of betrayal and destruction, the work of salvation will take place through the coming of Christ. It means that the three beings, which are the betrayers, the destroyers, and the Savior, will appear in this order. Then, how will the appearance of the betrayers, which marks the beginning of the events of Revelation, take place? It begins with the appearance of the seven stars, the seven angels who prepare the way that Jesus held in His right hand. And an incident of betrayal happens when these people do not keep the covenant with Jesus but become one with Satan's pastors. Therefore, they are the betrayers. If so, how does the work of destruction come about and who are the destroyers? The destroyers who destroy the tabernacle of the chosen people who had betrayed are the seven pastors of Satan, the beast with seven heads and ten horns. In Revelation chapter 13, the seven pastors and the saints in the tabernacle preparing the way received the mark from the seven pastors of the beast and worshipped the beast, becoming Satan's belonging, moving away from the side of God. This is the event of destruction. After that, how will the event of salvation be fulfilled? When the event of betrayal and destruction promised in Revelation appears, the one pastor who saw the actual entities of the betrayers and the destroyers and perceived the reality of Revelation appears. This pastor fights and overcomes the pastors belonging to Satan, so the promised pastor who sounds the seventh trumpet of salvation appears and the work of salvation unfolds. To find out about this, let's read Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 11. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. If we look at the words of Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 11, we can see that there is a spiritual war between the promised pastor and the seven pastors of the beast who had destroyed heaven, which is the tabernacle. The promised pastor and his brothers, who saw and heard the events of betrayal and destruction which appeared according to the Bible, they fight against and overcome the group of the dragon with the word of their testimony. And from then on, God's salvation, power, and kingdom fulfill as promised. If they had lost to the group of the dragon, then there is no God's kingdom or salvation. But because they were victorious, the kingdom of God can be established and the work of salvation can begin. At this time, the sound of the seventh trumpet will be the sound of the news of victory and the testimony to the events of salvation 
in which the kingdom of the world becomes the kingdom of God. The promised pastor, the overcomer, who can testify to this word, will be the actual entity of the seventh trumpet. Then, what kind of place is the kingdom of God where the seventh trumpet of salvation is sounded? To find out about this, let's read Isaiah chapter 18, verse 3. All you people of the world, you who live on the earth, when a banner is raised on the mountains, you will see it, and when a trumpet sounds, you will hear it. In Isaiah chapter 18 verse 3, when the trumpet is sounded on the mountain, all the people of the world and those who live on the earth are told to hear it. Then the place where the trumpet is sounded will be on a mountain, And the mountain where the trumpet is blown is said to be Zion as in Joel chapter 2 verse 1. Therefore, we can realize that the place where the trumpet is sounded is Mount Zion. In Revelation chapter 14 verse 1, it is written that the Lamb and the 144,000 are standing on Mount Zion. Through this content, we can see that when the events of the book of Revelation are fulfilled, the seventh trumpet will be blown in the church where the overcomer who is with God and Jesus is, which is figuratively represented as Mount Zion, just as the expression, a mountain of people or a sea of people. Then, where is this spiritual Mount Zion where the seventh trumpet is sounded? To understand this, let's read Verses 3 to 4 of Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 to 8. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. Reading Revelation chapter 7, verses 3 to 4, we see those who are sealed who are called the servants of God. These are the 144,000 of the 12 tribes, 12,000 in each tribe. These are the same people as the 144,000, the first fruits on Mount Zion in Revelation chapter 14, harvested and gathered by Jesus and the angels at the trumpet sound. The reality of Mount Zion today is the 12 tribes of Shinchenji created by harvesting and sealing those born of God's seed. Also, as promised in Revelation chapter 21, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, heaven will come here where the spirit and the flesh become one to fulfill the resurrection, the kingdom of heaven, and eternal life. So, what is the reality of the seventh trumpet that is sounded today? It is the introductory, intermediate, and advanced curriculum of the seminar of the testimony on Revelation that is testified by Shinchanji. Shinchanji's promised pastor, the chairman, and the twelve tribe leaders have testified to the entire book of Revelation and the mission center instructors have testified to the introductory curriculum, and the heads of the churches are preaching the intermediate curriculum of the seminar. This is the reality that today's seventh trumpet is being sounded. Numerous pastors from around the world who have listened to this seminar have recognized this word and are forming the MOU agreements with Shinchanji. And numerous media outlets around the world are gathering their attention to this and are holding press conferences. This is how the kingdom of the world becomes the kingdom of God as mentioned in Revelation chapter 11 verse 15. Lastly, I will summarize the words that we have shared today. The seventh, last trumpet sound 
is the sound of God's victory in which the kingdom of the world becomes the kingdom of God. And through this sound, resurrection and eternal life are accomplished. Therefore, we must hear the sound of the seventh last trumpet. In order to perceive this trumpet sound, the sound of the seventh trumpet, which is a mystery of salvation, we must know the reality of the three mysteries of revelation, and in order to know it, we must receive the testimony of the promised pastor who has seen and heard the realities that have appeared. Then, I believe that we must meet the promised pastor, receive the testimony, perceive the mystery of salvation, and become a believer who is saved. Therefore, all members of the 12 tribes of Shincheonji know who the entity of these three mysteries are. The betrayer, the destroyer, and savior. They all know this through the promised pastor of this New Testament. I believe that this is a testimony of salvation. So I pray that all the pastors and members of the churches will also verify this word to the end, perceive the mystery of salvation, and become one in God and Jesus through the word. In the next session, a lecturer who is more skilled than I will come and testify about Lesson 20, about the son who inherits God's inheritance. I hope that you will attend and have a valuable time to understand and to receive grace. Now, finally, I will shout, We are one, and we will say this together with the meaning that we are one in God and in Jesus. When I shout, We are one, please raise your finger like this and let us proclaim it together. Transcending races, nationalities, and religions, we are one in God and in Jesus and in the Bible. We are one. Let us pray to God. Holy and grateful Father God, I sincerely thank you for your tremendous grace and your love. In this era, when your last work is being fulfilled, we give gratitude and glory to you for allowing the sound of the seventh trumpet to be heard through the Shincheonji online seminar of the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter. Let this trumpet sound be heard, and may your victory and the resurrection and eternal life be accomplished. Because that is the fulfillment of your purpose and the fulfillment of our hope. So please help each person to hear the trumpet sound and to become the precious people who can participate in the work of the last resurrection and to enter eternal life together. To do this, first, please allow all pastors and the members of the churches to become one in this revealed word, to be transformed by the seed of this word and be born again to become your perfect children. And please help us to be completely changed into your precious children who can enter into the eternal world that you desire. This is your work of heaven that is being fulfilled on this earth. And this is the way to eternal life. So please allow all of us to partake in this together. I believe that you hear all of these earnest requests and prayers. And I pray this in the name of Jesus, who is life. Amen. Thank you for listening.